Hello everyone, I'm David and welcome back to another First Aid Skills video. In this week's video, we're going to be going over the two burns that we didn't cover last week, which would be our chemical and our electrical burns. Both of these burns have special considerations that we'll go over, and they're both the types of burns where we will call 911 for, because they can cause complications that first aiders can't deal with. So we'll start with our chemical burns. Chemical burns are caused by any caustic, dry, or wet chemical that comes in contact with the skin. So to treat these burns, the first thing we want to do is make sure we have full PPE. So we want gloves on, goggles on, full aprons on. If you have a full face mask, that's a bonus because we want to do everything we can to not get this chemical on us and for us to get burnt. So once you have all your protective gear on, you want to take a cloth or a brush or something. And if there's a dry powder that you can see on the person, we want to just take our thing, our brush towel and get off as much of it as we can. Cause any chemical that's still sitting on the skin will continue to burn them. And some chemicals, dry chemicals will actually react to water. So you want to be careful and we want to make sure we get rid of as much of that as we can. So once you've brushed off all the chemical you can see, take your water, same as last week, pour it over the burn for 10 to 15 minutes or until EMS arrives. <clears throat> now, the difference between when dealing with a chemical burn and a thermal burn is we want to watch where your water is going because the water you're using to cool down the burn is actually can contain some of the chemicals that the person was burnt with. And if that water starts flowing towards you on the ground, if it comes in contact with you, it can burn you. So make sure that water is flowing away from you and the person you're helping when it hits the ground. So next step, you want to look at their clothing around the burn area. So if they have clothing there and you can see that there's chemical and stuff on the clothing, we want to cut away as much of that clothing as you can to get it off the person. Again, if it's stuck to the burn, don't peel it off. But if you can see there's powder on it and it's loose fitting and you can get it away without hurting them, get rid of it. If you have an MSDS or a material safety data sheet, you can look at that for more information on how to treat it because it contains all the information. If not, just wait for 911 to arrive and then they'll know what to do. So next we'll go over our electrical burns. So with electrical burns, they're typically caused by very high current, uh, possibly even getting hit by lightning. So when electricity goes through the body, muscles contract and it can actually cause uh, damage to bone structures. So when you're dealing with someone who has severe electrical burns, we want to make sure we treat them as if they fell, hit their head, hurt their spine. And this is, we don't want to move them unnecessarily unless um, something around them is life threatening and we have to move them. But if you don't have to move them, keep their head still, make sure they don't move, treat it as if their spine could be injured too. Make sure you're safe. Of course, make sure there's no, the current that got them is no longer there and can't electrocute you. And then you want to treat their wounds. Same thing. You want to put water over the wound for 10 to 15 minutes to cool it down. But with electrical wounds, if it's a big enough current, it has, it will typically have an entry point and an exit. So if you see a burn here, look on the other side, look at the bottom of the feet, palms of the hands, anywhere they could have grounded themselves and look for a secondary burn where the electricity would have exited the body and treat that wound the same way with 10 to 15 minutes of cool water to cool it down. So that's it for this week's video. Thank you all for coming. I hope to see you all next week. Thank you.